uh, is for it here is askshirel.com. A S K Shirel, S H I R E L L E dot com. And that's a very interesting website. That That's a website where you just give, you just um, yeah. think using Shirel as the guru for, for kids. Right. Uh, right. You, you want to tell us, a, tell us a little bit about that? Well, it, it, it came out of the book because, uh, as I was saying before, so I, this idea came to me about writing this book. I spent a year on it and then started talking to people in the publishing business and uh, everybody said the same thing, which is, wow, what a great idea for a book. It's so commercial. Too bad no publisher will look at it, which isn't what you want to hear. <laughs> and uh, what they said is, you don't have a, an, a platform. You don't have an audience. Uh, if Brad Pitt had written this book, it would be published tomorrow. But you don't have that, and the publishing industry is too depressed to take a gamble on something like this. So I said, okay. And after, you know, crying and beating my head against the wall for a while, I came up with this idea about, well, I'm now working as a therapist. I specialize in helping kids do things that very often kids and parents communicate. What if I created a website where I made myself a brand and I was the guy online you could go to to help get families do better? And I uh, played with the idea a bit, didn't love it, thinking about it, things. And finally, one day, the light bulb went off in my head and went, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to be the therapist. She is. And that's so much better. And so the website gives advice. It's like a dear Abby, if that means anything. Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. Um, but it's a, place where you go in and ask a question, ask advice, and the answer comes to you from a dog's point of view. So, uh, yes, all my therapeutic knowledge goes into it, of course, but uh, beyond that, it's an attitude of complete non-shaming. Dogs do not understand shame. They don't have it. Uh, my argument within the family is in a traditional family, in the cliche world we think of as a traditional family, when there's an argument, when there's a fight going on in the family, who's the only member of the family who still loves everyone unconditionally? The dog. Mm -hmm. And who's the only one that can whisper, that can hear what's whispered behind closed doors? The dog. So to say that level of wisdom makes you a great advisor for when there are problems. Um, so I really did it as a thing to build publicity for the book. And it may have helped some with that. Uh, more, it has taken on a life of its own. And as you say, it is just something, it's free of charge. I, I, I could get advertising on it, but my thing is I wouldn't be able to have control over it. And I owe it to the dog to not sell anything that she wouldn't approve of. So, um, <laughs> That's so good. So, so basically, Shirel yeah. helped you become a guru. A guru oh, shrouded oh, in invisibility because oh. people think they're talking to the dog. It's not about you, is it? <laughs> yeah, well, I've never thought of myself as a guru. I, and I <laughs> no, don't, Shirel, I, Shirel. <laughs> I'm really, more like I'm an apostle. I've kind of channeled. <laughs> uh, uh, that's uh, brilliant. You hear those bumper stickers that say, what would Jesus do? My thing is, what would Shirel say? You know, if you could talk. Yeah. And she had, you know, enormous positivity. Uh, even if she was chasing a cat to kill it, there was just this energy of loving life and loving everybody. <laughs> Sense of even they're loving that cat. Uh, so what would that point of view say? And to my mind, usually when we get in stuck, stupid places, that's the voice in our head that we're not hearing. All right. So I'm, I'm going to ask um, Shirelle now, um, since Shirelle has been talking to so many individuals now, um, they've been asking her questions. Hi, Shirelle. Um, so if we, if we ask Shirelle, the question is, if, if a person is feeling 
uh, unsure, uncertain, they're feeling weak, and they want to become more powerful. Uh, or a, a boss wants to turn their team into a more powerful business um, or a more powerful team. What do they need to do, Shirel? What do you think Shirel would, would say to that? Well, with the individual, it would be clear, which is uh, if you don't feel power, it's probably because you don't know your real passion. Because if you found your true passion, it would take you over. And, you know, for her, chasing squirrels takes her over. Love of food takes her over. Loving me or wanting to jump on a stranger it would take her over. And most of us, when you talk about learned helplessness, we detach ourselves from connecting with our own passions. And you get to a point where uh, maybe there are things that you really love, but you aren't living your passion. I loved movies. I really loved movies. And I wanted to be a filmmaker. That's not the same thing. If you talk to a young Martin Scorsese or a young uh, George Miller, they would say, I want to do this. I love doing this. It wouldn't be so much about loving movies. It would be, I love doing this. I dive into it. Uh, that's a difference. And I'd say most of us, I find, really lose contact with it. And Why? Why do we do that? I think we're, we are very good children. A, a, we're very good children, and pursuing your passion is not convenient for the family because your passion might be running around naked in front of guests. You know, yeah. might be something... Not uh, too socially or, acceptable, yeah. Yeah, you know, might be uh, beating up your little sister. You know, and so you learn not to do those things, but then we need to learn to get to our passions with including the ones that are maybe acceptable, that yeah. are probably unacceptable. <laughs> um, so, so how do uh, we do that? What, what, or, one team. Or, people, or people are, because uh, that's a nice family. That's the, what I imagine is the Diaz family. It's certainly the Greek family. The really nice families. Um, not the ones where it's abusive or you're growing up with an alcoholic parent or whatever. Things where truly the child is just beat down and shamed to a no. horrible We're talking horrible. about normal families, yeah. Sadly, it's pretty damn normal. <laughs> I, wish, I wish it weren't. Um, then, uh, but with the, if the uh, organizational, I, I don't think Sherelle's ever been asked that, which is interesting. <laughs> so it's, it's a little challenge. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think she would say something along those lines. Uh, I am a drama therapist as well as a psychotherapist. I love doing activity-based stuff. And I would think there would be uh, activities that a group could do in a seminar or just a weekly meeting where the goal is to get people to connect to the passion, what they care about most in life. I had a, a incredibly powerful moment in an acting class, one of these acting classes years ago, where the teacher was reading through, from a very good book about directing that said at one point, uh, the essence of every character is what they want. And every character has a single want, and that's what you have to work with. And you'll get that in writing classes too, but for whatever reason, that night it really hit me, and I said, I don't know what my want is. And I drove around for like two or three hours after that class, just, what's my want? What's my want? And eventually I came up with the idea, I want to avoid being embarrassed. I want to avoid shame. Well, that sucks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, it does suck. <laughs> and then to say, okay, I'm going to work on finding what I want. What is, what, what do I really want? What do I want most? And whether that later becomes a romantic thing where I could devote myself 100% to how much I want her. And if she dumps me, I'm flat on the street, a, you know, puddle of mess. But I lived. I lived for that. And 
uh, I sure had a passion about that dog. And what did then? My, my question here is: What was Cheryl's one thing? If if you had one thing that she wanted, I would say embracing life at all times. She embraced sleep. When she slept, you could see she would go into it fully. Uh, there was nothing. It, when, when she wanted, she there was nothing in the way. So it was it was actually the life. The the passion was her thing. Um, there was a time she had uh, a nightmare operation. She, her spleen had exploded uh, with what proved to be a cancer. And they opened her up and removed the spleen. And so I don't know if you can see, but, but she was a very long bodied dog and that those stitches went pretty much the whole way. Uh, and I went to the hospital after the operation and there she was in a cage with tons of tubes stuck in her and doped up and all that. And I was just so glad she was alive because I was scared to death. And she looked up, saw me, and, oh, good, we're going home now. And got up and walked out, pulling all the tubes out and all this <laughs> whole thing there, stuff running. <laughs> I've had enough. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, this was not good. I want to go home with you. I don't like this place. And that, I would say, was it. And she, she just embraced everything all the time and she certainly loved uh people she certainly loved me but uh but she loved others as well well definitely she is a good example for all of us so yeah. thank you thank you thank you for bringing Cheryl to us and right. for keeping her memory alive uh the book again is the teachings of Cheryl you want to put that up the teachings of Shirel, life lessons from a divine knucklehead. If people want to get that book, where do they go? Amazon? I would say Amazon uh, is going to be your best bet. Yeah, Amazon. Um, I, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful book. It's full of wisdom. And the website is Ask Shirel. Ask Shirel. It's dot com. Um, if you have kids or teenagers, uh, people that want to ask questions, but they, they don't want to talk to you. Maybe this oh, is a great website to go to. Thank you. And I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, my intent when I created it was children. And I've had all ages yeah. I've written all over the world. Uh, I was in my naive provincialism. I was assuming U.S., England, Australia, South Africa. No, there's another country that has more English speakers than all of us put together, which is India. Um, India has been tons, but probably every country in Africa has written in number of Asian places. Places like Iran, and I go, like, oh, I didn't know they could do that. Wonderful. Uh, China, it's, it's, it's been an amazing, amazing experience. And while certainly the joy for me overall has been the feeling that I'm keeping her alive, and spirit going and putting it out there. Uh, it also has been a great learning experience for me. And one of them, one of the main things has been to realize for all our differences, we are so much alike. The questions that get written in are universal to everybody. Most particularly, uh, 12 year old girls, 11 year old girls writing in, hi Sherelle, so there's this boy at school and he's so cute and I love him so much. And, but I, I can't talk to him. I don't, I don't know how to talk to him. So he doesn't know I exist. Do you think he likes me? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> so anytime you, you hear, again, you know, nonsense going on in this country right now, that the, the people saying, Oh, people from there are bad people from there. Oh my God, we are so much more. So the same. So the same. So much alive. Well, with those words of wisdom, uh, we leave you. Thank Dougie. you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much for giving us your time and your wisdom and Cheryl's wisdom. I, I, and I don't we, have any and, wisdom of mine. It was all hers. 
And I'm sure I, I represent all our listeners. I'm sure that they all feel the same way. We wish you a lot of success because we, we really believe in what you're doing. And, um, and, and, and thank you for keeping Cheryl's mem memory alive. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pedro, very much.